It's certainly an art, definitely an art form. Uh, it encourages experimentation. Really a great way to underscore community. The industry has just exploded around us. I don't think the sky's the limit where it could reach. First, of course, in New Hampshire, you got to go back to 1991 when uh, the Portsmouth Brewery opened up. And uh, I mean, if you go all the way back, Frank Jones, the king of all ale makers in downtown Portsmouth, Portsmouth was the largest ale producer in the entire world, not just America, but in the entire world. That one brewery alone was grinding out an estimated 500,000 barrels of ale a year, about a million kegs. Then Prohibition came along, shut it all down. Um, everything and they brought beer back in New Hampshire but it didn't last very long then in 1991 they come forward to the craft beer scene Portsmouth Brewer opened up Market Street downtown Portsmouth uh, I remember when that opened because I just turned 21 and this was a real novelty at the time you go in there and you're eating dinner and behind the glass wall they're brewing the beer that they're serving this was a, this was a rare thing in New Hampshire no one had ever seen anything like it and no one knew if it would catch on um, a number of small family breweries had survived prohibition and were still brewing and distributing locally. And so you could get beer in Wisconsin that you couldn't get virtually anywhere else. And then in the, in the seacoast, it was Throwback. Throwback came along and burst onto the scene. That's kind of where our name comes from, is, throw, yeah. is that throwback to pre-prohibition, where brewers used what they had around them to make the beer. They made beer with anything they could find under the sun. They made beer with pumpkins and berries and spruce tips off the tree to make a spruce beer. Whatever they could figure out. If you go all the way back to pyramid building times, it was the women that made the beer all the way through pre-colonial America. So beer is only four ingredients, right? Water, hops, yeast, and malt. And so the obvious question would be like, from four ingredients, how do you get thousands of different beer bottles on the shelf when you go into those bottle shops? Put anything in a beer, like, does it sound interesting? Yeah, let's fucking do it. The cool thing about doing brewing, whether you're doing it as a hobby or some of the students who are doing it as a definite career path, um, is that it ties in all this science into it. So even if you thought you were just going to learn some cool hobby stuff, you're going to pick up actually a lot of chemistry and biology along the way. And you're talking about the chemistry of beer and, you know, why do they brew Guinness in Ireland and, and a light lager in, in the Czech Republic, and it all has to do with the chemistry. They're all different, they're all quirky in their own way, they all have their own special flavors, their own, uh, their own labels. We're, we're in it, we're, we're trying to, you know, obviously make a name for ourselves, obviously grow our business, but there, there's a lot of excitement, you know. Uh, the industry is stable enough now where just about every, you know, restaurant or liquor store wants to be involved in craft beer. I think that one of the, one of the great things about, you know, from from a tap room perspective, you know, with the craft beer industry, is it's really a great way to, um, to really underscore community. It's hard to sort of describe, but it's not like going to a bar, right? You go into the little small breweries that you know that is being brewed right here, down the street from where you live, you want to help support that. In a way, I think it's a collaboration with the consumers as well. Mm -hmm. It's a collaboration throughout the community because they're telling you what they want, what they like. They're providing suggestions and we can respond to that in a way that a bigger organization might not be able to. And when we opened, we really wanted to celebrate the community aspect of beer. Certainly here at Hobbs Farm, we've been trying to make those spaces. That's the one thing that's blown my mind more than anything else. If you put that many bookstores, that many car dealerships, that many anything, that all sell the same type of product in such a small area, you'd think it would be cutthroat, that they would be killing each other trying to get the business. And the brew scene is not like that at all. You, you, when you talk to someone who's excited about it, you get excited about it. Like, Smell this, try this, do that. When the craft brewery started opening, and they made it this very welcoming place that a lot of them have community seating. So when you go, you end up sitting down next to people you don't know, you end up talking to them. Um, you end up meeting people, and now a lot of the craft breweries serve food. They 
uh, have things like cribbage and yoga and music and things that just make it a very welcoming atmosphere. You know, and we've been really lucky to be able to have a farm where, you know, our farmers grow, last year they grew about half of our produce for the kitchen. It's coming right off the field into our kitchen, into the plates. We like making uh, beers that really complement the food. The whole buy local thing that's been around many, many years now, shop local, try to support the local business, we didn't have that option in the beer community for the most part. Now we do. Well, home brewing was really uh, an outlet for me to, to try some beers I hadn't tried before and to learn an art that I was interested in because I was interested in beer as a commodity, as a, a consumer product, as something that I could make myself and share with my friends. It's part of what I tell people, you know, and they say, well, you know, what sets yours apart? And I said, well, you know, we use the same ingredients as everybody else, but here's why I'm selling it. Here's why I'm here, and here's my connection to that beer. Um, you know, beers are, you know, you use them for the best parts of your life, the worst parts of your life. You have a drink, you have a beer. And those are tied to us, they're tied to memory. You're going to see breweries on every corner. I feel like, you know, maybe not as many Dunkin' Donuts as we see, but you're going to see a lot of them <laughs> down the road. <laughs> you were just talking about all the little breweries that are, are popping up. I think um, those that will be successful will not only make high-quality beer, but will also have a story that makes them different and that people They'll find those people that are have similar values and will be wanting to support them as their business grows. Be able to produce a product that is consistent and quality control wise doesn't have any problems and your customers are going to keep coming back for it because it's reliable. You have to know the process and the science behind it. Uh, that's critical and you have to be able to do the post analysis to know that your product is safe and, and you know is exactly what you say is in the bottle. And, but, on the other hand, with all the craft brewers starting up, people, the customers don't just want, you know, their plain light lager anymore. They want more selection, and that's where the art really comes into it. We're, we're passionate about what we do. We right. take what we do very seriously, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. We want people to come in and feel that excitement, hear those stories, be part of the next story, and, and, and be able to give us some feedback and, and toast to the good times and, and the bad ones as well.